All right, all right. Hey, Facebook Live, our Facebook family. We are here in a really unique location. And um, we're here in a parcel of land that we're getting ready to sell right in the heart of Uptown Whittier uh, on Greenleaf. So right on the main drag of Greenleaf. And it's a piece of land that is for sale. And um, I'm here with Jesse with J2 Architect. Hey, how's it going? Um, and what, uh, what the whole idea of today was really to talk about what's happening in Uptown Whittier. The goal is, is really 15 minutes of an update maybe I know you put together some conceptual plans for what the space would look like some of it includes residential maybe briefly talk about that and anything else that maybe the city's doing that makes this a really good time to maybe uh, consider this piece of land so they if you're uh, following City Council actually uh, this week they just passed a um, a budget to get going on the streetscape which is gonna be the improvement along Greenleaf and parts of Philadelphia so they gives they're gonna be site uh, site improvements uh, or beautification project. So, so what does that mean to a consumer that's walking down the street? What am I expecting to see? It just means that you're gonna have a nicer uh, street that's gonna be more attracted, attractable. Is that the right word? Attractive. Attractive <laughs> uh, to consumers who are walking down the street. Uh, it's also gonna help business, uh, local businesses. Obviously, it's gonna bring more people from from. Uh, it's become a destination of where people come and enjoy the uh, the uptown feel. Now. Are they breaking up the streets and, and that when we talk streets, hardscape, are they changing all that? They're removing trees? Right now it's about uh, coming up with that design, so getting those specifics. Uh, the idea would be that yes, it's going to give get a whole new look. Um, potentially street uh, or curb sidewalk widening, uh, rearranging some of the parking. But again, that's what the city council has approved to kind of go through that design concept. Okay. So that's been approved. Now it's just a matter of what do we want it to look like? Uh, the budgets have been, yes, it's been established that they want to get going with it. It's just going to come down to what the idea is, yes. Got it, got it. Okay. So what other things are maybe happening in Uptown? I know you're a real local architect, meaning a lot of your projects are not just in Whittier, but heck, even on the street. So do you want to say some of the exciting things that maybe that you can speak about that are coming up that um, would make this site even more attractive? Well, there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's a restaurant hub, essentially. There's a lot of new restaurants that are opening up. Uh, just recently, we had Modern Shaman, which I had the pleasure or the opportunity actually to work with a, a local restaurant owner. Um, Are we allowed to say the owner's name? Okay. Yeah, definitely, Mike. Okay. So Mike, yeah, Mike is the owner of the Modern Shaman, which is probably one of the longest standing restaurant bars in the area. I think he celebrated what? 25th, 25th year. 25th year, yeah. really? really. 20, right. 25 years yeah. of... Uh... So Mike's also the owner of the 6740. Correct. Which a lot of people know that as a staple here in, in Uptown. So the Modern Shaman is a vegan place? It's, it's a, a vegan, vegan option? Correct. It's a vegan restaurant that just opened. Uh, their whole concept is that they're trying to use more organic, um, kind of save, save uh, the amount of uh, waste on food food waste and all that stuff mm -hmm. so it's a new concept uh, again something that you would find somewhere in downtown LA or or different cities on the it's west, now, side, the west side is now it's coming here to uh, this uptown Whittier got it and then how about some other projects I know the, the biggest one of the bigger projects that you're working on is the brewery well, well let's before we get to a big bigger project okay. I mean I just want to talk about the new restaurants that just opened recently uh -huh. uh, we got JC's kitchen which we also had the, the opportunity to work with again local chefs uh, really good stuff I mean these guys are, are well known in the community and they decided to invest into a restaurant or in uptown um, again their whole concept is, is doing uh, tacos but it's it's a different way of putting a taco yeah. together uh, again they're right on Greenleaf uh, up the street from here and really good food really yeah. good guys all right which other projects how about the Indian place Are you doing so that? so here well before we get into that one uh, <laughs> can't even share that one exactly right exactly we're, you know we're working we just uh, recently uh, got plans approved or working on plans to get approved for a uh, a new development here where we're gonna take a, it's a pretty big space it's about 8,000 square feet we're duplicating the square footage and it's gonna be a uh, Whittier collective uh, space meaning we're gonna have uh, something that you would see again in the west side uh, or downtown LA now we're gonna have a hub where you'll be able to get a bunch of uh, estheticians uh, hairstylists uh, just kind of creating that community here in uptown Whittier so it's a collaborative space. It's a collaborative space, yes. So people will be able, from those that, that type of industry, come together and collaborate in a community space? Correct, correct. So that's one. Uh, the, the next one is, uh, again, we're working on also another restaurant here locally, uh, New Canton, which has been a restaurant that's been 
here forever. Uh, he's probably uh, been here for uh, 30 some years. And he's right across the way from the park, the metered parking and the Nixon. Correct, building, he's right? on Philadelphia and, and uh, Greenleaf. Again, yeah. talk about a, a local uh, person who's invested so much in the area. Uh, now he's looking to expand his restaurant uh, to be able to have more capacity for seating. So how is he expanding the restaurant, which is exciting? It, yeah, he, so he's actually going up. He's, uh, uh, he's adding a second floor. He's doing a little outdoor patio and uh, extending his seating and bar area to, uh, to have more patrons. All right, and then are we so, ready for the big one? Or? And, and the, yeah, and the, next, the big one is, uh, is essentially the Weir Brewing Company. Um, it's called Poi Gardens. Uh, chef Ricardo, well, again, another well-known uh, uh, chef yep. who's uh, lived here. I mean, he went to school here, uh, homegrown guy, um, is again reinvesting back into his community. Uh, this will be his third restaurant here in Uptown. What are the names of the other ones so people would know? So he's also the chef for Colonia Publica and uh, in Bizarra Capital which if you have not been to both those places, you're probably living under a rock, but uh, they're both good places. Yeah. And again, he's extending now uh, to the Warrior Brewing Company, Poi Gardens, to be able to create a, a more f a family friendly atmosphere where uh, you know you could enjoy all the, essentially an eclectic mix of, of food, but also pairing it with some really good uh, locally bro brewed beer. And it's a big place, right? It's a big space. It's yeah. probably gonna be the biggest space in Uptown Whittier. Uh, as far as any undertaking by any type of investor, developer, restaurant owner, right? How big is the actual space that he's in? So he's at, in about 10,000 square feet of uh, interior space, and then he has about a 4,000 square foot uh, patio, outdoor patio. Uh -huh. um, and again, the concept that he has is something that you would see somewhere, uh, you know, downtown LA, west side. Again, we're bringing, or he's bringing that here locally to the uptown area. Um, and, and it's, the way someone explained it to me was it's a similar feel to the Anaheim Packing House where it's you have almost a cafeteria communal type seating and then there's a lot of uh, eating options there. Is that how it is? That's a concept that you have uh, several uh, kitchens that where you'll be able to you know uh, prepare different types of food. Uh, but again, it's all kind of uh, you'll bring in guest chefs who would be able to create specific menus. Again, the idea would be that it's it's uh, it, it'll be kind of paired to whatever the uh, the brew that they got going on. All right. I know this is a tough question to nail down, but if you were to say when they would be opening, they're they're close. I mean, uh, he was shooting for end of the month, uh, oh, wow. March, Mar end of March, uh, okay. April. So, and they're cranking away. I mean, they're, they're uh, I think they're close to getting that that target. Yeah. Do you get to go in and see sneak peeks? As I try. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. They and this is something I noticed. Uh, earlier this week they used to have the glass when you walk in the building you can at least kind of peek your head over and kind of see some of it now it's drywall now it's drywall <laughs> so you can't really get a sneak peek anymore now they're trying to trying to make sure you go into the space so you can see what's what it's all about yeah very nice all right and then uh anything else that's happening in the in the city or should we talk about the land again in terms of the city again there's there's uh there's been this uh new business or actually uh property owners uh, kind of association that that has been been put together uh, for the same purpose, which is trying to beautify and and create more of an economy here in the uptown area. So you have property owners who are now investing back into the community. You have business owners who are investing back into the community, um, along with partnering with the city, who's also putting money towards towards some of this re redevelopment. Um, one project we did not talk about, which is the, the one that the city's undertaking. And that's a uh, three-story uh, parking yeah. structure. Uh, it's it's right behind. Uh, it's on on Comstock, uh, between Comstock, uh, on Comstock between Philadelphia and Bailey. Um, again, you talk about the space that's needed for parking. That's yeah. always a concern, um, and the city's responding. You know, bringing that parking in. Manny, good morning. If you have any questions, Manny's in the. He's on the first on the second floor of where the brewery's going. So. That's right. He's gonna to get to enjoy uh, many uh, adult beverages at his leisure. Um, That's right. All right, now so let's talk about this parcel of land. Um, I'll maybe give the dimensions. The parcel is a 50 by 140, Correct. so it's one of your standard parcels. There's really two parcels here in Uptown, right? It's, it's uh, they're all 140 uh, depth, and then they're either 50 or 100. Correct. Right. So that's that's generally purpose. So this is a, a 50 wide, so it's uh, 7,000 square feet. Now, there were some conceptual plans uh, put together. Do you want to maybe talk about that? And these are 
um, and maybe talk about the process that we went through to get it to a point where at least someone has some, you know, some, uh, some idea that this is something that, that would move forward. So well, what we did is we, we essentially put a conceptual plan together to get it submitted to the city uh, to kind of go through their preliminary review, which is essentially uh, submitting a conceptual plan or idea um, and then the city routes it to all the departments that, that would have or be involved in this type of project. So we got feedback already from every department in terms of what they're looking for, uh, what to kind of look out for. Um, and the idea was, at least from the design, the conceptual design was to create a three-story building. Uh, three-story building with some parking on the first floor, uh, having some retail on the ground level, and then adding a uh, office on the second floor, and then Two some, offices. Two, two, large, two large offices. Yeah. Two large offices on the second floor, and then uh, on the third floor doing some residential living. Again, it's a, it's a, a complete mixed-use type building. Um, it was a whole info project, meaning it was going to take the whole footprint of the, of the site. And the city came back, and, and it was something that's doable. Um, obviously, they gave us a thumbs up with certain requirements that we needed to meet. And, uh, and again, it's, it's something that's available there for the size of the lot. It, it makes sense to keep it within that range of two to three stories. Um, and, then, and again, end of the use is going to come down to whoever is what they're looking for, right? Yeah. That specific client uh, who we kind of put that together for was yeah. was uh, trying to bring their business into the space or into the building, uh, which is why they wanted that requirement. One nice thing about this property, uh, where it's located in the uh, Uptown specific plan, is that uh, you're, you're exempt from parking. As long as you're doing all commercial use, you're exempt from parking. As soon as you put residential use, you're having to add on-site parking, which is why on that concept, we added some parking on the ground level. But if somebody wanted to take on the whole footprint and create a usable space, um, as long as it's a commercial use, then, uh, then it's, it's, it's doable. So that means you don't have to have on-site parking. Correct. So that means you can build, again, we said it's 7,000 square feet of a parcel. Let's say if you wanted a single story, you can potentially build all 7,000 square feet out. Correct. Got it. And so no parking requirement. No parking requirement. But one, I'll say this: one caveat from the city is that they want to, they want to create, they want to create this kind of variation of architecture that all and massing and scale that kind of fits into a neighborhood. So one of the requirements is that it, it must be a minimum two-story building, and then they have a max which is six feet or six stories. Sorry, uh, but due to obviously the size of the lot, you know, uh, a three to maybe four-story building would make sense. Uh, but again, it's endless in, in the type of, of space you would want to create, knowing that it's a, it's a pretty large footprint. Got it. And, and I don't know if this question came up yet, but the parcel of land right now is on the market for four forty nine. dollars so, and, and this is something I later found out about, really, the, the uptown area and the parcels of land. So most of uptown Whittier has been developed for many years, and really the parcels that are available now, which are, I think, maybe one or two, um, are available because of the earthquake. Correct. <laughs> the earthquake in 87, you know, um, came and shook up some buildings and some of these buildings got knocked down or got to a position where they needed to be knocked down. And some of them were built back up and a very few were not. And so this being one of the only, one of maybe two vacant lands on Greenleaf. Uh, and I think the only one that's available for sale. So, it, you know, when you talk about location and the demand, there's very few, again, parcels that are going to be available like this in Uptown Whittier. Um, Jesse, if it was your piece of land, what would you like to see be put in here? If it was for me, I'd probably build a big, big house. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, again, it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna depend on what we're looking for, right? For me, I think the mixed use would make sense. Um, I was obviously kidding about putting a big house, but I would add some kind of residential component to it. If it was for me. Uh, maybe on the third floor like a big space um, and then on the lower floors obviously we'll still do that mixed use which is uh, office and uh, retail at the, at the ground level um, but again in terms of, of what that would mean for for space wise the, the lot is yeah. is a good size I mean it's, it's, it's not overly big and it's not tiny either so you know and I'll and I'll say what I would want to do with it based off of uh, interviews that we've done on a podcast so one of the things that Jesse and I do is uh, a podcast called What's Up Woodier. We just broke 18,000 downloads. So to those that are on there uh, and have listened to some of our podcasts, thank you. The one thing that we ask that question is, what would you like to see in Woodier? And a lot of times it is a space for 
uh, like entertainment, live music, and so forth. So what I would love to see here, someone take this space and turn it into almost like a house of blues type concept where it's, it's not too big, where it's gonna be overwhelming, but it's still a good enough space where you can have live music, have a nice intimate space, maybe for comedy or so forth. Just a, a space that I don't think is here in Uptown. Correct. So if you are interested and wanna put something like that together, that's, I would love to help, and I'm, I'm sure you would love to participate as well, to bring something like that over uh, here to the Uptown Woody area. Anything else that we maybe missed? I think it's it's more of a obviously the projects I just talked about are, are, are it's a short list yeah. of what's really happening I mean there's a lot of projects on the boards obviously not just me but other local architects um, there's other architects there's other architects just like there's other realtors <laughs> come on <laughs> but again the, you, it's, it's a good thing because that just means that everybody's looking to reinvest yeah. into a community that they believe in um, and they see a potential also in, in, in a space so um, again there's, there's going to be more projects coming online. Um, again, some we can't talk about, but others we, that we can. Obviously, you can see the kind of range of what's happening. And even at that, I mean, we have a lot of young businesses, too, that are have recently started, and uh, and they're thriving. I mean, they're yeah. thriving just because of that same idea that there's there's a space that is very unique. It, it, we're, Uptown's a very unique space that, um, that you will not find in other cities. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else? I think that's it. I'm trying to, I was really trying to stall. <laughs> oh, you were? It, well, again, and, and if... if right, we got a call there, we go ahead. If you want to talk about other projects, I mean, other other businesses, we got, you know, Auntie's is a big one. I mean, that place is, talk about a jam that's, that's, uh, that was needed badly here in Uptown. It's a breakfast place that's always busy. Always, yeah. again, there's, there's a, a way to get in, but really good food. Um, you talk about a person, an individual uh, who's also invested so much into the town, uh, who also opened up a coffee shop, you know, uh, just catty corner from, from there. Um, there's a lot of, again, a lot of good different uh, businesses that are coming online, uh, but the idea is that we're all kind of working together. There's like some kind of synergy between everybody where we could work together on. Uh, we, got, we got the local business association that's also putting together events. Uh, we got we got the antique fair that's coming up in April that you know closes down a couple of streets and the idea is that we're bringing in people from the outside uh, to come and, and and understand what Uptown is all about and explore maybe a couple of the restaurants or, or retailers that are uh, along Greenleaf in Philadelphia. Uh, we got also uh, you know other we got business owners that are coming together to create the taps and tapas which is also an event that's coming up, uh, which is, again, showcasing the local restaurants or local eateries uh, and pairing that up with, with uh, local uh, breweries. So talk about what, you know, what, uh, how tight of a community it is and, and how everybody's looking or working hard to kind of make a place or a destination. Um, I mean, everybody's putting a big effort on, on trying to do some cool stuff. Awesome, all right. So since there's no more questions, we'll save this video and you guys can watch it later. Jesse, thanks for coming on. Uh, we do appreciate you. I know you're busy and we have to drag you out here. Um, <laughs> but thank you for those that tuned in and uh, we'll see you soon, Woodier. Thank you, guys. Bye.